Namaste ji, namaste. Welcome to courtroom. I sincerely hope that you're doing well. This lecture will be extremely helpful for CLAT PG as well as DJS mains because this judgment is expected to show up as per my insight. Hopefully that it definitely shows up. Even if it does not show up, it is a landmark judgment on section 319 of the CRPC. It clarifies a very important point and the question that has been answered is can you summon new accused after the judgment is delivered? Now this is the main cardinal question that was asked by well, the appellant and the Supreme Court has answered it. Firstly, let us write down the judgment name. It is Sukhpal Singh Khera versus the state of Punjab. This lecture is a part of our uh, CLAT PG ka batch. I'll be posting this on YouTube as well. This will be posted in our Judiciary Online Coaching Program as well because the judgment is the same. It's just that it uh, varies the kind of questions that they can ask in DJS mains from this judgment vis a vis the CLAT PG because CLAT PGs maybe if they ask this judgment they are going to be giving you a paragraph from this judgment and then they will go into the length and breadth of what this judgment did. Secondly, which law commission reports that it referred to, what was the, who all was sitting on the bench, what is 319 all about and what was finally concluded in this case. When it comes to DJS mains, they will give you fictional, the, the story that exists in this judgment, they will give you that fictional situation. Of course, you are going to have the bear act with you and then they are going to ask you to decide on it. So 319 CRPC is any which way a very hot section for DJS. They, if you if you analyze the past years, also they are fanatic about 319 CRPC. All right. So now let us discuss Sukhpal Singh Khera versus the state of Punjab. The citations I are on your screen. I won't uh, read them. So this is related to section 319 CRPC for CLAT PG. Now you need to wrote, learn what does 319 really exactly contain. So first. Let us go and discuss 319 CRPC. Let us have a brief overview of what this section says to really understand where this story really is going. Power to proceed against other persons appearing to be guilty of offence. So they are not yet guilty of an offence. Appearing to be guilty and appearing to who? The court, most likely the Sessions Court, where in the course of any inquiry into or trial of an offence. So in this case, the judgment has been delivered and after the judgment has been delivered, a new summoning order under 319 was uh, was issued to the to five new accused. So they said, look, the section says in the course of any inquiry into or trial of. So if the trial has ended as the judgment has been delivered, how are you issuing us a summoning order under section 319 of the CRPC? Like how in the bloody hell is that possible? So Supreme Court said, Sawal to acha hai. Let us go to a five judge bench. So earlier it went, the matter went to a two judge bench and then finally it went to a five judge bench. The judgment was delivered on the 5th of December 2022. The case pertains to I think 2015 and then the Sessions Court ki judgment came in um, as in was delivered on to, in 2017 I believe. All right. It appears from the evidence that any person not being the accused, so this guy is absolutely fresh, this, this guy was not the initial accused, has committed any offence for which such person could be tried together with the accused. So there are two, this, this word could be tried together with the accused. Does that mean must be tried together with the accused? Could be tried together with the accused? What is the meaning of this? Supreme Court has clarified in this judgment. We are going to get to that later in the lecture. The court may proceed against such person for the offence which he appears to have committed. Okay, so the main intent of the legislature behind the section is that no one, even if they are not the initial accused, if the court thinks that this guy needs to be brought to the book, this extraordinary power has been conferred on the court by the legislature. All right. Now I am going to be attaching, so this judgment I have marked it inside out. I have marked it inside out, I will be attaching it um, in, inside of the course, you can download it. So you can listen to this lecture and then you can read the judgment with my most important pointers to you. Like for example, I will just show you, I will show you, so this is going, so I like this, I have marked out from the judgments 
uh, sorry from the judgment that is and you will just read the most important point but firstly we'll go through the lecture as well all right so 3191 says that well the court has the power to summon a new accused all right or anyone anyone who is not the accused so the court can well court can basically proceed again proceed ahead against them as well when such person is not attending the court he may be arrested or summoned so both powers are available as the circumstances of the case may require for the purpose of course that great any person attending the court so that means you are you know you are attending the proceedings there although not under arrest or upon a summons may be detained by such court for the purpose of the inquiry into court ko lagta jaj sahab ko lagta hai isko isko roko zara yahan pe jo aapne jo mujhe pura mudda jo evidence on record pesh kara hai mujhe lagta hai isko bhi isko bhi bhai sahab se isse bhi inquiry kar leni chahiye to wo wahan pe bhi they can do this or trial of the offense which have which appears to have committed all right so this is this is quite a wide power that is available to the judicial officer there where the court proceeds against any person under subsection 1 right then is now we are in subsection 4 by the way so these were subsection 1 2 and 3 now we are in 4 and now we clause a the proceedings in respect of such person shall be commenced afresh and the witnesses reheard so pretty much a de novo trial right absolutely from scratch subject to the provision of clause a the case may proceed as if such person had been an accused person when the court took cognizance of the offense upon which the inquiry or trial was commenced i believe this is pretty much simple but the main question is when is the is the, does the trial end when the judgment is delivered all right so wahan pe ek pichidgi hai wahan pe there is a hyper technicality attached to it let us get to that now all right first and foremost must be facts from which dgs mains can create a fictional sort of a situation and then they can give you this very situation that happens in this case and then they are going to ask you ki please just do tell us that whether this uh, the summoning order uh, is is valid under 319 so you need to then explain to the examiner that you know 319 you need to explain to the examiner that you have quoted this classic that this judgment now which is on record is that you have studied it and you need to explain to the examiner the ratio decidendi of this case of course in your language as a prospective judicial officer because because mains ka exam requires a certain sort of a language all right so 5th march 2015 ye sab clat pg wali janta no need to remember even matlab dhs mains etc no need to remember such details ye to sare ke sare question mein de rakhe hain clat pg mein to ye sab puchhenge nahi clat pg mein jo puchhenge main abhi us pe aa raha hu 5th march 2015 ko fir against 11 persons was done and 31st october 2017 the sessions court delivered a judgment in which nine convicted and there were two acquittals same day same day once this conviction order was passed same day so sessions court summoned five new for an inquiry five new persons for an inquiry to ye jo panch new me se jo aaye unme se ek the unka naam tha sukhpal khaira who was the leader of of the opposition in the punjab legislative assembly at that time all right so summoning order was issued to them 319 and then they they challenged it that how can you issue a summoning order when when the conviction order has been passed already so the case is closed as per them so since trial is concluded the judgment has been delivered the five went to the punjab and haryana high court for criminal revision petitions and punjab and haryana high court upheld it ki summoning order is absolutely valid they went to the supreme court and they asked that how can session summon when trial has been trial is over or trial is concluded now who are we now where are we coming in from and how does the court have this power because the court's power is limited by these words in 319 subsection 1 where in the course of an inquiry into a trial of an offense in the course of any inquiry into or trial when the inquiry is over of course when the inquiry is over you go on to the trial stage and when now the trial is also over where exactly are we coming in from supreme court said we can bring you in and how so we'll let you know all right so this was the entire this is the basically the entire mudda this is the this is basically the fight this is the root the the root or the core crux of the case so in 2019 this uh, appeal went to the supreme court against the punjab haryana high courts uh, upholding upholding of uh, the criminal revision uh, petitions there that uh, two judge bench was formed and then they passed it on to a five judge bench ab now since clat pg is very fond of asking who was on the bench and who wasn't on the bench if this judgment shows up last year i think in 2023 clat pg took place on the 18th of december if i'm not mistaken this year it's uh, slated to uh, take place on the 3rd of december 
I'm not sure whether they asked this judgment last year. I don't think it was there. But let us uh, still revise. Abdul Nazir, B. R. Gawai, A. S. Bopanna, V. Rama Subramaniam, and B. V. Nagratna, the first female CGI, slated to be the first female CGI. This was the bench strength. So, always ask who all were not, which of the following judges were not on the bench of this case. Like, if if they if they give you an excerpt from this paragraph, they can ask you the judgment ka name. They will also ask the reference to the law commission report that has been made because they almost forever ask that. Now, that doesn't mean that you go to law commission's website and start to wrote learn all of the law commission reports and their titles. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to take a reverse approach. You have to take the most relevant judgments and then refer to the law commission reports that have been cited in there to crack clack PG specifically. All right. So the question is, the bench pondered on when does the trial conclude? Does it really conclude at the delivery of the conviction order? Does it really, uh, can we say that once the judgment is passed, the court's job is over? Or once the sentence is clarified, is the, is the court's job over? And then can they uh, issue a summoning order in the 319? All right. So till when, like till when, when till when can you summon new folks? All right. Now, we go to three, 311 because that's a related section to 319. So 319, 313, 311 is interconnected sections. Not exactly interconnected, but it's always you know, always good to, good to revise the, the related uh, relevant sections. So power to summon material witness or examine person present. Any court may at any stage of an inquiry, trial or other proceedings under this court. Which court are we in? CRPC 1973. Summon any person as a witness or examine any person in attendance, though not summoned as a witness or recall and re-examine any person already examined. Does the court have the power to, to re-examine? Of course, yes, under 311, this is a possible MCQ for CLAG PG if they go after this judgment in the exam. So this is, after the initial trial, etc. was going on, the court used the power under 311, they called back prosecution witness 4 and 5 to re-examine them and these prosecution witnesses under re-examination named these five new five new people, including Mr. Khera. All right, so that is basically the entire kahani, and that's why we have referred to 311. Now, two judgments that that this judgment has, of course, referred to doctrine of stated decisis, given in Article 141 of uh, of the Constitution of India. Keep on, keep on revising the constitution like this, and and you will pretty much score very high marks given. Because it says, sab kuch mostly is, is interconnected, and it, well then, it all makes up one body. Of course, rest guess take cannot be said in this context, but overall in layman terms, you can say that. So Shashikant Singh versus Tarkeshwar Singh and Hardeep Singh versus State of Punjab. So ye is pe jo CLAT PG usually question banata, which of the following is not connected to 319 CRPC so they have referred to like a couple multiple judgments uh, more I think do or in one refer kari hai to teen option mein ye do to pakka hongi aur ek koi random koi judgment hongi which is not related to 319 CRPC so agar ye judgment pad rakhi ho aur ye thode se naam agar note kar rakhi ho life becomes pretty much easier all right now can CLAT PG etc be prepared on your own yeah of course but if you are, let us say, in your final sem and you need to save time, then only if you want to save time, because that is that is pretty much the thing, and you want these insights, as in as in my own experience with insights, then you can consider joining the online batch. Otherwise, not because this can be people do it on their own as well. It's pretty much as simple as that. All right. So the bench of two honourable judges of the court was of the opinion that the question. With regard to the actual stage at which the trial is said to have concluded is required to be authoritatively considered since the power under 319 of CRPC is extraordinary in nature. All right. So they said, no, we need more viewpoints on this. So they framed the most important questions. They said, whether the trial court has the power under 319 of CRPC for summoning additional accused when the trial with respect to other co-accused has ended and the judgment of conviction rendered on the same date before pronouncing the summoning order. Do you understand the same Kahani that I have that told you? Ki inka ji par judgment of conviction has been rendered on the same date before pronouncing the summoning order. So summoning order baad mein aa hai, judgment of conviction has been pronounced before that. All right. Now whether the trial court has the power under section 319 of CRPC for summoning additional con accused when the trial in respect of certain other absconding accused 
यहाँ पे ये ये क्वेश्चन को बनाया गया अभी जस्ट वन मटीरियल फैक्ट आई टेल यू मोर हुज प्रेजेंस इज सब्सिक्वेंटली सिक्योर्ड इज ऑन गोइंग स्लैश पेंडिंग हैविंग बीन बायफोकेटेड फ्रॉम द मेन ट्रायल इसके ऊपर जरा अभी एक सेकेंड में बात करें and what are the guidelines that the competent court must follow while exercising power under 319 CRPC all right to yahan pe jo ye jo teen sawal hai inke upar abhi answer aane wala hai all right yahan pe jo dusra sawal tha this primarily this so 10 accused inka jo case chal raha tha so one accused was absconding so inka jo main case chal raha tha that was titled as 289 of 2015 sessions case and one accused उनका सेपरेट कर दिया था सो टू वन सेवन ऑफ टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन दिस केस वॉज बायू दैट्स वाई दिस क्वेश्चन इज इज गिवन कि इफ दिस इज द केस इन विच द केस इज बायफोकेटेड थैंक्स टू वन एक्यूज बिंग एब्सकॉन्डिंग एक्सेट्रा वॉट देन इज द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ थ्री वन नाइन सी आर बी सी एंड वॉट इज द कोर्ट्स पावर देन और राइट एंड गाइडलाइंस के ऊपर तो पक्का सवाल आएगा ही आएगा और राइट इट रेफर्ड सो दे कैन ऑल्सो आस्क सेक्शन थ्री फिफ्टी थ्री सो सेक्शन थ्री फिफ्टी थ्री इज जजमेंट क्योंकि हम जजमेंट के पीछे पड़े हुए हैं द जजमेंट इन एवरी सो यू नीड टू रोट लर्न सेक्शन नंबर एज वेल अगर स्पेसिफिकली इस पैराग्राफ यहाँ से जजमेंट से कोई पैराग्राफ आया तो द जजमेंट इन एवरी ट्रायल इन एनी क्रिमिनल कोर्ट ऑफ ऑरिजिनल जोरिस्टिक्शन ऑरिजिनल जोरिस्टिक्शन ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट इज गिवन वेयर आर्टिकल वन थ्री वन शैल बी प्रोनाउंस इन ओपन कोर्ट बाय द प्रिसाइडिंग ऑफिसर immediately after the termination of trial or at subsequent time of which notice shall be given to the parties of the pleaders immediately after the termination of the trial is the sine qua non of this uh, section this as in one sine qua non and then at the su some subsequent time but we need not get into the details of 353 because 354 is much more important so 353 ke upar judgment likh lijiyega that's just about it this is this is a section to remember for you now one a uh, term legal term that they, they refer to in the judgment is a uh, functus officio so they were pondering on whether the court has become functus officio as the trial has concluded now so functus officio ka matlab they can frame a one liner mcq and ask you so functus officio refers to an officer or agency whose mandate has expired due to either the arrival of an expiry date or an agency having accomplished the purpose for which it was created all right फंक्टर्स ऑफ इशो का मतलब इस साल के लिए देन बिकम इम्पोर्टेंट अदरवाइज अब क्या होगा लेटर से दैट अ स्टूडेंट एनालाइज द पास्ट ईयर्स एंड देन देखो लाइक फंक्टर्स ऑफ इशो पूछा तो सारी के साथ लीगल टर्म्स रिवाइज करो हाँ करनी तो चाहिए ही लीगल टर्म्स रिवाइज बट फंक्टर्स ऑफ इशो के चांसेस बहुत ज़्यादा हैं पूछने के अगर ये जजमेंट पूछी गई तो जिसके भी चांसेस बहुत ज़्यादा हैं पूछे जाने के ओके देन वी गो टू थ्री वन नाइन इन दैट रिगार्ड द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ इनकॉपरेटिंग द प्रोविजन ऑफ सी आर पी एंड बिस्टाविंग सच पावर टू द कोर्ट वॉज बेस्ड ऑन द रिकमेंडेशन मेड बाई द लॉ कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया एनएच Forty first report. This is a short, short question in CLAT PG. If this judgment is referred to, if if a question, if questions, series of questions come from this judgment, they will ask you three one nine of the CRPC was incorporated based on which law commission report? This is the forty first law commission report. That is how you extract out all the damn possible MCQs that they will ever ask you. All right. Then, बोलता है legal maxim की तरफ जा रहे हैं. एंड बेसिकली इन्होंने वो जजमेंट कोर्ट कर रखी है ऊपर ये वाली जो दो थी वन सेकेंड जस्ट गो बैक हेयर एंड या दिस वन शशिकांत सिंह वर्सेस तरकेश्वर सिंह एंड हरदीप सिंह वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ पंजाब अभी हरदीप सिंह वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ पंजाब के अंदर से ये सारे रेलिवेंट एक्सर्ट्स निकाले हुए हैं एंड देन वी गोल टू शशिकांत सिंह विच इज फैक्ट्स आर नॉट एग्जैक्टली द सेम बट थोड़े थोड़े से मिलो अच्छा तो वहाँ से इन्होंने मैक्सिम निकाला है जी मैक्सिम इस साल के लिए लिख लीजिए जुडेक्स डैमनेटूर कम नो सेंस एप्सोलोवी टूर दैट इज जज इज कंडेम्ड व्हेन गिल्टी इज एक्विटेड ना दिस इज अ वेरी रैंडम लीगल मैक्सिम राइट इट डाउन दिस वाज गिवन इन द जजमेंट सो देयरफॉर यू नीड टू राइट डाउन स्पेसिफिकली योर क्लैट पीजिए डी जे के अंदर तो वो सिर्फ कहानी पूछेगा थ्री नाइन थ्री वन नाइन एक्सप्लेनेशन करके आपको इसे पूरे स्टेज ऑफ ट्रायल वगैरह वगैरह सब कुछ पूछ लेगा दैट जो आपके जो जो दूसरे जो लेक्चर्स लगे हुए हैं जो सीआरपीसी के अंदर वहाँ पे आपको थ्री वन नाइन एंड स्टेज ऑफ ट्रायल एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा वहाँ पे सब कुछ समझा रखा है वो आप वहाँ से रेफर टू करेंगे दिस इज प्राइमरली जजमेंट ट्रैकिंग एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग थ्री वन नाइन इन अ रियल लाइफ सिचुएशन इन अ वेरी पेक्यूलियर रियल लाइफ सिचुएशन सच एज दिस राइट एंड देन दे ऑल्सो वेंट ऑन टू कमेंट दैट ओनली कोर्ट्स हैव द पावर अंडर थ्री वन नाइन नॉट द पुलिस एंड कोर्स वेल दिस यहाँ पे जो आपका जो जो वर्ड जो कोर्स था थ्री वन नाइन में दैट इंक्लूड्स बोथ इंक्वायरी एंड ट्रायल राइट देन अनदर थिंग 
another legal maxim that they refer to is uh, the legal maxim a verbis legis non est recendum recend recedendum which means from the words of law there must be no departure all right what thought is latin a verbis legis non est recedendum actually that is, that should be the correct pronunciation of lat latin that is there but care uh, sounds very funny to her bolna hi chahiye from the words of law there must be no departure is saal ke liye most important please write it down has to be kept in mind okay then it goes to ek badi achhi inhone bold karke di hui judgment ke andar supreme court has is, is really upped its game in terms of judgment formatting etc since after the filing of the charge sheet the court reaches the stage of inquiry and as soon as the court frames the charges the trial commences so when does the trial commences as soon as the court frames the charges and therefore the power under 319 sub section 1 can be exercised at any time after the charge sheet is filed and before the pronouncement of the judgment except during the stage of sections 207 208 crpc we need not get it those to kab kab 319 crpc jo pichli judgment mein se jo unhone uthaya after the basically exercised at any time after the charge sheet is filed and before the pronouncement of the judgment now if they go back again and they say thus does the application of provision of section 319 crpc at the stage of inquiry is to be understood in its correct perspective the power under 319 crpc can be exercised only on the basis of the evidence adduced before the court during a trial which enables it to call somebody else ki is evidence ke hisab se mujhe lagta hai ki aap bhi accused hain sir aaiye idhar that is what pretty much 319 is right has Uh, elements of the inquisitorial system of law wherein judge saab ke khud ke anti ne on ho gaye ki pakdo isko isko pakdo isko idhar zara lao isse zara push start karenge that pretty much is what 319 crpc right now in the shashikant singh wali judgment to ye unhone wo jo uh, dusri jo singh saab ki judgment thi i think harpal singh jo bhi likha hua tha so shashikant singh dusri wali judgment ko refer kar raha hai the 302 aur 34 as usual read with 34 don't ask me what 302 and 34 of ipc is agar nahi yaad hai to please section yaad kar चंद्रशेखर सिंह बट हुआ क्या कि चंद्रशेखर सिंह के साथ ट्रायल करते हुए so the main accused was chandra shikhar singh but during when the evidence was being recorded so the judge sab wanted tarkeshwar singh and two others uh, to be to be framed as accused as well and hua kya ki tarkeshwar singh ko summoning order diya hoga 319 ke under ki zara aana and he went to the high court uh, via criminal revision while the criminal revision was pending so during the pendency the sessions convicted chandru ji so therefore iske andar bhi ek question utha tha now what यहाँ तो कन्विक्शन आ चुकी है थ्री वन नाइन से ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ दी दी इंक्वायरी और ट्रायल राइट तो ये तो कह रहे जी खत्म हो गया तो यहाँ पर यहाँ पे द कोर्ट सेड यू एनी विच वी नीड टू हैव अ डीन ओवर ट्रायल फॉर थ्री वन नाइन समन्स राइट व्हेन द कोर्ट प्रोसीड अगेंस्ट एनी पर्सन अंडर सब सेक्शन वन देन द प्रोसीडिंग इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ सच पर्सन शैल बी कमेंस्ट ऑफ फ्रेश एंड द विटनेस री हर्ड दैट्स ए डीन ओवर ट्रायल डीन ओवर इज अ गुड लीगल टर्म टू राइट इन योर नोट्स और then we go to which power is exercised however a certain amount of irony in the crease is required to explain the connotation of the phrase could be tried together with the accused so they said look it was this was in this case also the court upheld ki 319 mein aapko saman zarur kiya ja sakta hai saman karke bula ke accused bhi label hum kar sakte hain aapko it said we actually need to go after this phrase that what is the meaning of the true purport of exercising the power as per the phrase बिफोर दी प्रोनाउंसमेंट ऑफ जजमेंट ये जजमेंट का जो सीन जो चल रहा है थ्री फिफ्टी थ्री पे जजमेंट के अंदर है क्या तो वो कहते हैं पहले जरा जजमेंट को ही पकड़ के देख लेते हैं उसी से समझ लेते हैं सो सेक्शन टू थर्टी टू एक्विटल दिस इज अ फेमस सेक्शन दैट इज आज इन प्रीलियम जस्ट राइट एड डाउन प्रीलियम ऑफ जुडिशरी यहाँ पे टू थर्टी टू वेर इज एक्विटल गिवन टू थर्टी टू वी वॉन्ट गो इन टू द डेप्स बट टू थर्टी फाइव जजमेंट ऑफ एक्विटल और कन्विक्शन After hearing arguments and points of law, any the judge shall give a judgment in the case of judge shall give. मतलब judgment आनी आनी. If the accused is convicted, the judge shall unless he proceeds in accordance with the provisions of section three sixty three sixty is for अच्छा है नन्ना मुन्ना अच्छे 
aadmi imandar aadmi he heard the accused on the question of the sentence and then passed sentence on him according to law if the accused is convicted let us read again the judge shall unless he proceeds forget section 360 hear the accused on the question of sentence to conviction pass ho gayi hai lekin jaj saab ka bhi kaam khatam nahi hua abhi to unhone samne wale ki vichar sunne hain on the sentence that is being passed against him and then only will he complete his job so the trial exactly hasn't really concluded with the with the passing of the conviction order right now you go to 3 54 acha ye chapter again prelims mein to aate hi rehta hai but clat pg mein agar you know this judgment is also chapter 17 the judgment so it goes from 353 to 365 uh, right down chapter 17 the judgment ke upar and we go now to 354 which contains uh, the answer to our question 354 says except as otherwise expressly provided by the court okay so it shall be written the judgment shall be written in the language of the court shall contain point for determina uh, determination the decision their own reason for decision forget that when the conviction is under the indian penal code and it is doubtful under which of two sections or under which two parts of the same section of that court the offense falls the court shall distinctly express the same the court has to work as per the language of the court when the conviction is for an offense punishable with death with imprisonment for life the judgment shall state the reasons for the sentence awarded and in the case of sentence of death these special reasons okay when the conviction is an offense punishable with imprisonment for a term of 1 year or more etc it shall record its reasons to so, judgment ke sath jab conviction jab pass ho rahi hai to uske baad sentence sentence court ko bhi clarify karna hai मतलब पार्टी अभी खत्म नहीं हुई है वेन एनी पर्सन सेंटेंस टू डेट देंटेंस शैल डायरेक्ट ही बी हैंड बाय द नेक टिल ही इज डेड ओके सो द कोर्ट सेड 354 को रेफर करते हुए दैट इज नाउ द मेन रेशियो ऑफ द केस द ट्रायल इज नॉट कंप्लीट सिंस द लर्नेड सेशंस जज इज रिक्वायर्ड टू अप्लाई हर हिज और हर माइंड टू द एविडेंस व्हिच इज अवेलेबल ऑन रिकॉर्ड टू डिटरमाइन द ग्रेविटी ऑफ द चार्ज व्हिच द एक्यूज इज फाउंड गिल्टी तो यू हैव बीन फाउंड गिल्टी but the trial is not yet complete because the judge still needs application of mind to the role of the particular accused all right so therefore it cannot be said that the trial is complete on the pronouncement of the judgment of conviction alone it though it may be so in the case of an acquittal as contemplated in the 232 of the crpc but specifically for conviction the trial is not yet complete and if the trial is not yet complete i can issue you an order to well to come to court under 319 and it will be completely valid hopefully sari ram kahani clear ho gayi hai ye ra ratio maine judgment jab mark kar diya pdf download kar lena aur ek bari apne digital device pe pad lijiyega usko ek aur judgment refer hui thi ram narak versus ramesh narayan all right aur uske andar yahan pe inhone bolded out portion de rakha hai that is the relevant portion from that judgment if the accused is convicted sub section 2 of section 235 requires that the judge unless he proceeds in accordance with the provisions of the section 360 as usual 360 mandar okay here the accused on the question of sentence and then pass sentence on him according to law so there are stages here if the accused is convicted conviction to ho gayi aapki 360 mein hum ja nahi rahe 360 agar mein agar hum nahi gaye to fir judge sahab aapse puchhenge zara sentence ke bare mein tumhe kaisa lag raha hai right it will thus be seen that under the code after the conviction is recorded section 235 of section 2 inter alia provides that the judge shall hear the accused on the question of sentence and then pass sentence on him according to law the trial therefore comes to an end only after the sentence is awarded to the convicted person trial for sure is coming to an end only after the sentence is awarded mark that down all right मैं ज़्यादातर लाइक कम्प्लीटली आई एम ट्राइंग टू मैक्सिमाइज इंग्लिश इज पॉसिबल सो दैट दिस रीच इज अ वाइड ऑडियंस एंड एनी विच वेस्ट वर्ल्ड फ्रॉम द साउथ एंड द नॉर्थ ईस्ट आर मच मोर कम्फर्टेबल इन इंग्लिश दैट इज आई प्राइम मैनली आई एम शूटिंग आई एल बी शूटिंग ऑल ऑफ द लेक्चर्स इन द कोर्स इन 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 इंग्लिश एंड इंग्लिश लोन ऑल राइट इट इज क्लियर दैट अ कन्विक्शन ऑर्डर इज नॉट अ जजमेंट एज कॉन्टेबलेटेड अंडर सेक्शन थ्री फिफ्टी थ्री एंड दैट अ जजमेंट इज प्रोनाउंसड only after the award of the sentence ye yakub abdul razak menon versus state of maharashtra popular judgment ke andar bhi yahan pe ye quotation de rakhi thi right ye hamare aapke jaj sahab aapke legal researchers aur uh, assistants and clerks ne sab kuch nikal ke rakha hoga it is also relevant to mention that section 354 makes it clear that the judgment shall contain the punishment awarded to the accused it is therefore complete only after the sentence is determined So till the time that the sentence is determined, 
go ahead issue orders under 319 on the crpc all right very very hyper technical stuff but very important for clat pg and judiciary mains all right now it says therefore from a perusal of the provision and decision of the court it is clear that the conclusion of the trial in a criminal prosecution if it ends in a conviction a judgment is considered to be complete in all respects only when the sentence is imposed on the convict if the convict is not given the benefit of section 360 of the crpc homework for you look up what 360 of the crpc is right now final thing that they said in that view of the matter if the court finds from the evidence recorded in the process of trial that any other person is involved such power to summon the accused under 319 of crpc can be exercised by passing order to that effect before the sentence is imposed and the judgment is complete in all respects bringing the trial to a conclusion this is a possible mcq that till when till what time or till at what stage can the court give or rather issue a 319 order that is before the sentence is imposed it has to be passed before the sentence is imposed because once the sentence is imposed as per 319 subsection 1 you are through with it all right the judgment is complete in all respects bringing the trial to a conclusion then the court went into guidelines which i will not discuss verbally here i will i am giving you the pdf you just need to go through the guidelines once and that's about it jo bhi maine abhi samjhaya inhone summary point mein bata diya this entire lecture is summarized into this into these beautiful guidelines they are absolutely crystal clear if you are specially preparing for the judiciary any which way whether the question appears or not you as a as a potential magistrate and as a as as the as a master of the court you need to you need to go through these guidelines because they are absolutely absolutely uh, crucial all right and yahan se i think i'll just review ki koi important point hai ki nahi hai chali dekh hi lete hain jab itni sari baat ho gayi hai to dekh lete hain all right in the competent court if the competent court finds evidence or if application under 31 lcrpc is filed regarding involvement of any other person in committing the offense based on events recording in at any stage in trial before passing of the order on acquittal or sentence it shall pause the trial at that stage so you need to pause the trial ki bhaiya ruk jao 319 ke andar order issue ho raha hai zara dusre walon ko bhi pakad ke lao yahan the court shall thereupon first decide the need or otherwise to summon the additional accused and pass orders there on कोर्ट हैज टू डिसाइड कि वेदर टू कंटिन्यू दैट ट्रायल या इनको जोड़ के अब ट्रायल शुरू करना है या इनका बेसिकली इनका काम अगर फ्रेश तरीके से भी करना है क्योंकि वहाँ पे कुड भी ट्राइड भी लिखा हुआ है कोर्ट हैज टू कंसीडर दैट एज वेल इफ द डिसीजन ऑफ द कोर्ट इज टू एक्सरसाइज द पावर अंडर थ्री वन नाइन सी आर पी सी एंड समन दे क्यू सच समनिंग ऑर्डर शैल बी पास बिफोर प्रोसीडिंग फर्दर विद द ट्रायल इन द मेन केस सो दे साइड ऐसी सिचुएशन अब दोबारा आएगी नहीं ना हम लोग इतनी क्रिस्टल क्लियर आपको गाइडलाइन देते हैं प्लीज फॉलो दिस और राइट सो दिस विल भी इशूड आई एम श्योर टू ऑल जुडिशल अकेडमीज एंड and uh, low courts if the summoning order of the additional accused is passed depending on the stage at which it is passed the summoning order of an additional accused is passed depending on the stage the court shall also apply its mind to the fact as to whether such summoned accused is to be tried along with other accused or separately because if we going for separately then 319 sub section 4 comes into play if the decision is for a joint trial the fresh trial shall be commenced only after the securing the presence of the summoned accused if the decision is that the summoned accused can be tried separately on such order being made there will be no impediment for the court to continue and conclude the trial against the accused who were being proceeded with ki pehle jab zabardasti nahi hai ki unhi wala jo shuru wala jo original jo trial jo kar raha hai pehle usko complete karo fir inka fresh start karenge sath sath kaam kar lenge if the proceeding paused as in Uh, one above is in a case where the accused who were tried are to be acquitted and the decision is that the summoned accused can be tried fresh separately there will be no impediment to pass the judgment of acquittal in the main case sath sath dusre wale case pe koi asar nahi padega if the power so basically they are preventing people now going to high courts and challenging uh, 319 orders baselessly if the power is not invoked or exercised in the main trial till its conclusion and if there is a split up bifurcated case like it was in this one the power under 319 of crpc can be invoked or exercised only if there is evidence to that effect pointing to the involvement of the additional accused is pe koi mcq wagera nahi banega if after arguments are heard and the case is reserved for judgment the occasion arises for the court to invoke and exercise the power under 319 crpc the appropriate course for the court is to set it down for rehearing mark this down the judgment is the, uh, the case is reserved for judgment and 
Still, the court wants to invoke 319 and get, get fresh accused. It can do so because the judgment is rough. The trial is not yet concluded. This is what they have answered. On setting it down for re-hearing, the above late to procedure to, to decide about summoning hold of joint trial, otherwise shall be decided and proceeded with accordingly. Great. Even in such a case at that stage, if the decision is to summon additional accused and hold a joint trial, the trial shall be conducted afresh and de novo proceedings to be held because that is a requirement of 319 subsection 4. If in that circumstance the decision is to hold a separate trial in case of the summoned accused as indicated earlier, the main case may be decided by pronouncing the conviction and sentence and then proceed afresh against summoned accused. Wo pehle wale ko keh rahe hain, to pakadi liya hai conviction hai, to mat niklo yahan se, ab main dusre wale ka trial uh, meko afresh karna tha, main se karunga. In the case of acquittal, the order shall be passed to that effect in the main case and then proceed afresh against the summoned accused. Summoned accused is baat ka defensively sikta, look, look, jis ke andar hume summoned diya gaya tha, unko to aapne chhod diya, to hume bhi nahi. 232 ke andar acquittal ka agar order unko a gaya, zaruri nahi hai ki unko bhi aaya aur yeh us baat ko nahi challenge kar sakte. Having answered the questions referred, great, we direct the registry to offer. Alright, and uh, then they, they appreciated all the people who um, who uh, help them out, right? Hopefully, you appreciate this lecture as well. Hopefully, all the relevant MCQs have been covered. Hopefully, 319 is clear from the point of view of examinations. And um, hopefully, the question, so again, material facts, which is a fictional situation, you will be writing a great 20 mark answer. And if you will be writing a great 20 mark answer, and if you will be writing a great 20 mark answer, and if you will be writing so, you can ask the details of the details of the details of the guidelines of the details of the judgment, 41st law commission, etc. It will be like that. PG paper. Alright, if you wish to uh, study with us, consider joining us at our uh, website. I wish you all the very best. If you do not choose to do so as well, if you choose to do self-preparation, it is absolutely alright. It can be done. I always say that there is no exam that can be, cannot be attempted without self-prep. I wish you sincerely, I wish you all the very best. Uh, leave a comment down below if you need help with any other topic. I'll be sure to make a lecture on it. Take care for the lectures on judgment. So last I've uploaded on Joseph Shine as well, in which I demonstrated uh, what all could they ask for. Your miscellaneous application in Joseph Shine was uh, recently decided by the Supreme Court. I have detailed out all the MCQs that Glad PG can ask. This one, I believe these two serve as, uh, as good so-called demo lectures on YouTube. Further lectures that I'm preparing will be posted on our website alone. Hopefully these two give you a, a, a brief preview of how we will be preparing for CLAD PG because this is pretty much the only way to prepare it and then we have to go to constitutional law and then cover it out inside out so that whatever judgment that they may give, broadly we know all the, all the relevant articles and concepts and main uh, judgments there. All of that is also being uploaded there. All right. Wishing you folks all the very best again. Take care and uh, and hope to see you in uh, further lectures. Do explore the channel. It contains a lot of lectures. Ab to koi dekhta bhi nahi. But it will it will be of immense help to you. Uh, check the LLBX playlist. It contains a majority of the LLB syllabus. That will be really really fruitful to you uh, for your studies. Wishing you all the very best. Take care.